Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with a special video. The Robinhood IPO is coming up this week. The company is releasing the numbers we need to see, and I wanted to give you a video to answer that question, should I buy the Robinhood IPO? In this video, I'll start by showing you why I don't usually recommend buying IPO stocks, but why the Robinhood IPO could be a better deal. We'll then look at the details around Robinhood stock. When is the IPO date, the Robinhood IPO valuation, and how to get access to the stock before anyone else. Stick around though, because then I'm gonna reveal a surprise shock that could be coming for Robinhood IPO investors and a trading strategy for a quick profit. We're getting started, but you know, first I gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now first, all you out there in the nation know, I generally don't buy into IPO stocks when they come out. And despite some huge returns on a handful of IPO stocks like Facebook, Netflix, and Apple, research isn't as positive on the majority of IPOs. The average IPO stock loses 1.4% from its open price over the first month of trading and is down 5% from the closing price of the first day. Research in the Journal of Finance for IPOs shows an even bleaker picture. With the average IPO return flat or negative as far out as 36 months from the issue. And the problem here is that all that value is being sucked out of the companies when they issue their shares. And the problem has only gotten worse over the last few years. You see, in the past, when a company issued shares, it was typically still a very small company. The venture capital and the angel investors, those early stage investors that I used to work for, wanted to cash out in an IPO or an acquisition, so the companies just came to market much sooner. Apple and Microsoft both issued shares at less than a billion dollars market cap in the 80s. And even Netflix, as late as 2002, came to the market as less than a $500 million company. So you had these kinds of smaller, faster growing companies that investors could then buy into and still make those double and triple digit returns. Over the last few years though, companies have just been coming to market much, much later. For example, some of the biggest IPOs of last year, Unity Software issued shares at a market valuation of $14 billion, and Snowflake came to the market as a $30 billion company, but jumped to $75 billion on the first day. Both of these companies have struggled to grow from there. By the time regular investors get a piece of that action, you just don't have that small company growth left in the shares. Nation, you really do need to know how to value IPO stocks and which ones to buy, so I'm gonna link in the description below to a video showing you that process. Make sure you check that out. Now let's go over the details of the Robinhood IPO and how to get access to those shares before anyone else. First though, I wanna get your input on this. Do you plan on buying the Robinhood IPO and are you buying on Robinhood or through another app? So scroll down and let me know in the comments, yes or no on the Hood IPO and why. Robinhood has released some details for its IPO and expects shares to start trading on July 29th. The company sent out an email to platform users last week announcing the early access. So if you're on Robinhood, you can actually get early access to the stock before the IPO. To do that, you'll log into your account and go to this IPO access area where you're gonna see shares available on the platform. Robinhood regularly tries to get pre-IPO shares for its investors, and you see here it's done that for its own IPO as well with the ticker HOOD. So now you can click through and the platform sets an estimated share price based on the financials and early feedback. If you want access, you first have to click here to confirm your eligibility, which is really just letting you know some rules. So when you click there, it's gonna pop up with this screen. If you're restricted, you're gonna know about that because it's people like insiders to the company. Robinhood also has a policy on flipping, so getting an IPO stock and then selling it within 30 days, but we'll talk about that later. Last year, they just wanna make sure that you know IPOs can be risky. Like we saw earlier, most IPO stocks lose money within the first six months. But if you're good with all that, you can put in a request to buy shares of Robinhood before the IPO, and they have two ways of doing this. You can either agree to that price range, in this case it's between $38 to $42 a share, and they have a 20% band on that. So if the offer price is 20% above that $42 estimate, then they cancel your request and you have to put in a new offer. You can also set your own price, and I'll show you how to do that next. So here you either select that price range in the type here and how many shares you want. And again, this could mean you pay as much as $50 a share or that 20% above the estimated range. Or you can set this order type to name your price and put something in here. If the final share price before the IPO ends up being higher than that price you put in here, 
Robinhood is gonna notify you and ask if you wanna increase your price. It's actually a pretty simple process, and Robinhood says it's totally random who gets access to that IPO, but, but who knows how they're really working it. But of course, the question is still, should you buy the Robinhood IPO? Is it gonna be one of those that does double or triple digit returns, or is it gonna be like the majority of IPO stocks? Now that price range would bring the company to market at around $33 billion on 52.4 million shares and allow Robinhood to raise $2 billion from the IPO. Now that is down a little bit over the last month and I'll show you why next, but, but it's still a lot of cash infusion that could help the company grow. Robinhood has released its first quarter numbers in a pre-IPO filing and an outlook for the second quarter. And it's here largely where that $33 billion valuation is coming from it expects second quarter revenue, so the April through June period, to be as high as $574 million, which would be more than double from the same period of last year. Funded accounts are expected to increase by about four and a half million for a total of 22.5 million users. Now, despite some really strong growth in revenue, Robinhood still booked a loss of $1.4 billion in that first quarter, but a lot of that was on warrants and an explosion in marketing expenses. So if those do moderate, and, and I expect they will, then this company could be profitable as soon as next year, which would be positive for the shares. At that $33 billion market cap, shares of Robinhood would price at around 20 times its last four quarters revenue. By comparison, the Charles Schwab Corporation, ticker SCHW, trades for just eight times on a price to sales basis, though it, it does have more revenue streams and is more than just a platform. A closer comparison may be Interactive Brokers Group, ticker IBKR, trades for just 2.2 times sales. And despite that sizable $33 billion market cap, Robinhood is still a relatively tiny player in the space with just over $80 billion in client assets. Now that's a fraction of the $6 trillion in assets under Schwab and, and even the $3.3 trillion on E-Trade. And it's really a function of, of really who is investing on Robinhood. And, and this is hugely important in that valuation going forward. Nation, the most important thing you need to understand for Robinhood shares is where is that growth coming from and whether it can continue. Robinhood has an average account size of just $3,500 compared to Charles Schwab where, where it's over $240,000 on average. So Robinhood investors are almost exclusively those retail investors versus the advisors and, and institutional investors you see on those other investing platforms. So then you have to ask yourself, are those retail investors going to continue to make as many trades and, and is there gonna be that interest from that segment of the market going forward? And this is the big shock I think is waiting for investors buying shares of Robinhood, that the timing of the IPO is perfect for the company but might not be for investors. And we've already seen how this IPO price is based on some really stellar numbers from the first three months of the year. Growth in accounts and trading boomed with that GameStop frenzy in January. But now what I'm gonna show you is gonna point to a shock in those numbers that investors won't find out about for another three months. So if we come here and look at Google Trends, which is a website that shows relative search volume on Google, uh, for example, here we're looking at how many people are searching Google for the words stock market and stocks over the last three years. And now since that measure is on a relative basis, the high point is gonna be 100 and it shows everything else by comparison. And then just look at this, searches for these two terms. So investor interest in the stock market and stocks just exploded there in January when everyone thought GameStop was gonna make them rich and, and searches did stay fairly high for a while. The numbers were pretty modest before the pandemic but have really remained strong from January up to about a month ago. But then look at what's happening lately. Searches for these two terms, or really investor interest in the stock market is coming down, back down to where it was in 2018 and 2019. And I did the same thing here for Google searches of Robinhood. So this is gonna be people directly searching for Robinhood, interest in the platform. And you can see that strong jump when the pandemic started. Everyone is locked down and starts passing the hours by trading stocks. Then you get that huge spike in January. And again in April when shares of AMC started jumping as well. But look at what's happening lately. Search volume is around its lowest of the pandemic. Nation with the economy reopening, people are getting out and having better things to do than sit in front of their computer all day trading stocks. We see another confirmation of this in the volume of the biggest index ETFs. This is a chart of the daily trading volume for the Spider S&P 500 ETF, ticker SPY in blue, and the QQQ Trust, which tracks the NASDAQ index in red. Now I've averaged out the daily volume for each month, and you see here, the market just saw its weakest two months in the year in terms of investor interest in stocks. You had more than 100 million shares of the SPY traded daily in January, 
but nearly half that in June. So while that Robinhood IPO price is based on those blowout numbers from the first three months of the year and the outlook for the second quarter, which was still pretty good, you've got a massive slowdown in trading that could be about to surprise investors leading up to the third quarter. Now, whether the company pre-warns on that or whether it just comes out all at once when third quarter earnings are released right around November, it's a matter of when, not if, and how bad that hits the shares. The fact is that the vast majority of Robinhood revenue comes from those smaller retail investors. And, and I give the company all the credit in the world for opening up investing to everyone, but what happens when those meme stocks and the crypto trading aren't making everyone rich overnight? What happens when we're not getting a new stimulus check every few months to put into stocks and, and we can just go to the mall to spend our money on other things instead of sitting in our underwear trading stocks at 3 a.m.? That order flow of trades that accounts for almost all of Robinhood's revenue is gonna dry up and shares are gonna drop on that news. Now, even given all this, if you have access to that Robinhood IPO before the market, it might still be a good deal, but you need a strategy for investing. Now, IPOs have been hot this year and Robinhood is probably the most anticipated in years. I fully expect the shares to hit $50 and even higher on that first day of trading. So if you can get shares for $40 or even $45 directly through Robinhood before that IPO, that could potentially be an instant 25 or even 50% profit if those shares go to $60 each on the IPO date on July 29th. But again, you're facing a massive risk as those third quarter numbers get priced into the shares or as the stock approaches that earnings date. So you might consider taking some of those profits. Now, selling your IPO shares within that 30 days is gonna get your account restricted for two months from other IPOs, which might not be any great loss anyway, so that could be an option. You could also just wait the 30 days and then sell, and that means towards the end of August and still probably before the third quarter numbers start weighing on the stock. Over the longer term, Robinhood has definitely carved out a niche for itself in that retail investor segment and should continue to grow. Right now though, with that valuation based on those blowout first quarter numbers, I think there's more risk than it's worth and you might wait for a better price after the IPO. Click on the video to the right to learn how to value any IPO stock, my venture capital process for knowing whether to invest in IPOs. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.